all of you and it is a pleasure having been asked by Anne to come in and present today in honor of our black history. Now I must confess I am not a strong advocate of presenting or trying to present all of our history into one month. Our history did not begin on these shores and definitely since it did happen on some of it happened on these shores uh, it was rich and full. But after years of careful investigation uh, I have learned that the powers that colonized Africa did more than just beat our people into submission to their will. They deliberately brainwashed us so that we as Africans lost all self-knowledge, self-love, self-respect, self-pride, and self-dependency. You see, if you rob a people of all these things, you turn them into a race of robots forever dependent upon their captors and their minds are still slaves even though their bodies are free of the chains. In my studies over many years I have discovered that there was, there was a time when we the black people of America were once masters of the world. We whose forefathers once walked tall in the, Mer in the Americas, not as slaves, but rather as civilizers and rulers. We were in Samaria, we were in India, we founded great kingdoms in Cambodia, and the first man to be saluted as Emperor of China was a black man a son of Africa. Buddha was a black man from Africa. Krishna was a black warrior. And the Bible states that Nimrod was a great man in the eyes of the Lord and he was the father of Cush who founded the great Cushite nation. I shudder when I see our young people despise who they are and want to be someone else. But this is what many of us have become because if you want to destroy the culture of a nation, you must first brainwash the youth of that nation and deprive them of the knowledge of who they are. They were never taught that Africans were once kings of the Americas. They were founders of the great civilization, Olmec civilization, I get that word messed up, whose breathtaking relics uh, that was uh, carved in stone now grace many museums of the world. They were the ones that the Incas said came up from the sea. They are the ones who carved great step terraces along the mountainsides allowing people to grow food in an arid climate. It is said that they emitted a light from their fingertips that carved tunnels into mountains. In today's world we know that what they were trying to describe were laser beams. My favorite people are the Dogon people of Far East Africa. They had a great knowledge of the stars long before telescopes existed. They have an accurate representation of the Sirius star system in their village. The aboriginals have long stated that they were visited by star beings. No, these things which I have cited are not a part of American history, but they are integral parts of our history. Those things of the past are what has given us the strength to survive slavery, 
become landowners, educators, inventors, builders, and so on, and help to make America this great nation that it has become. That is why, I'll take a little personal note here, that I believe the hand of providence chose a man from Kenya and a white woman from Kansas to give this nation its first black president. I believe that with all of America's citizens working together, that we will again become great world leaders. Not black Americans become great world leaders, but Americans will become the leaders of the world because we are a free nation, we are an inventive nation, we believe in the freedom of everybody. And that is why that I think that this history should be taught to every child, white, black, and every other culture in our nation's school system. For truly, we are Americans and we are one. And working together, we have already proven that we cannot be defeated. It was short, I hope it was sweet, and I thank you. <laughs> Before I ask for questions, I would like to introduce a gentleman who is the best local historian that I have ever met. He has told me things about Brazos County, Brazos Valley, and Millican that I never knew. And some of you may know him. He's the curator of the Brazos Valley uh, African American Museum, Mr. Wayne Sadbury. Uh, 
here. But anyway, I, uh, these are all kinds of things that are they're just fascinating because um, um, it, it, this this history has not been written, and so we're 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 hoping to put it together, and uh, uh, we're not going to make it up. We're, we're going to. Uh, fa some fascinating things surface. One, one of the fascinating things surface is uh, uh, we had an African American uh, elected to the uh, to the state house of representatives in uh, uh, 1871. Black person from Brazos County. Can you imagine that? 1871. It's amazing. We had uh, two county commissioners in Brazos County. And, uh, you know, it's just amazing uh, what's happened. We had, uh, uh, I, di I didn't realize you were going to go into some of the other counties, but uh, um, uh, Washington County had a uh, black state senator in 1871. And he was really very important to this whole area because uh, he was an advocate for uh, public education education for everybody and uh, he was the one who encouraged the uh, state to take advantage of the Morrell Act and that's what created uh, Texas A&M mm -hmm. and because of his insistence um, they created Purdue at the same time and if you notice they both were along the Brazos River <laughs> kind of interesting but anyway uh, there's, there's a lot of a lot of good things in history, and I, I think we can appreciate all of it. Um, we, uh, we, we contribute uh, periodically to different things going on. We, we, uh, we're involved with the veterans. Uh, um, the presentation that was made downtown last year, and, and uh, there's a pretty good history of, of African-American veterans in this community. Um, because during the Korean War, we, we actually trained combat African-American pilots at, at Bryan Air Base. And uh, that was the only place in Texas that, that, that I know of that trained them at that time. And because it was segregated, they had to live in our part of the town. So uh, it really enhanced our town because they had to, we had supper clubs and everything. <laughs> And it was really, it was really cool. But um, what what that also did was, it, I was a young kid during that time, and and it really made us aware that there was so much more in the world, and it wasn't necessarily black or white. It was just different, and so we 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 really appreciated that. So anyway, thanks a lot. Yes. <laughs> I will, uh, I'd like to entertain questions if uh, anyone thinks I might have an answer. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to ask whether you could, and possibly as a project, we could put together books that in fact follow up what you have just said? Um, the things that I mentioned today in my short talk were things that I have learned and studied through the years that were long before the advent of slavery. So it's uh, information that is in the history books, but you must realize that uh, when we talk about history books, I'm not talking about the books that were written and published in America. There were, uh, well take for instance in Egypt. Okay, we were builders and civilizations in Egypt. I've studied that history and uh, we were, when we, we were brought here as slaves, we were not allowed to pass on the history of Africa uh, to our children. We were not allowed to learn to read 
and write right. for that reason. We were not permitted to speak our own language from where we came from. So in the process of this, a lot of our history became muddled. Uh, it was denied. It was a history lost and uh, not permitted to be revised. So yes, um, it would take a lot of research to put a book together along those lines. When we went into Latin America, we did not go in as slaves. We went in as builders. And then uh, if you stop and think about the black people of the world, the Asian nation, um, India, you know, they, they are labeled India, but they are from, they're descended from the black culture. You have different tribes or groups of people in China that are descended from us. Um, and so it's kind of difficult uh, to reinvent all of this, but I've spent years years of studying because in growing up I was the one child in my grandmother's family that she feared for my life because I could not keep my mouth shut <laughs> you know <laughs> but uh, I, I just could not believe that we had never done anything I could not believe all of the things that were said about our people. I know that my grandfather, my uncles, they got up and they went to work every day. They worked five and a half days a week. I could not believe that they were lazy as the, the connotation was given to them because I saw them work hard every day. And my mother, uh, long, long deceased, I have to give her credit. She was a young mother. However, she insisted that I read. And the running joke in our family was that um, I started reading because I knew that as long as my mother saw me with the book in my hand, she wouldn't ask me to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I spent, you know, years of studying and uh, we'd get our books at the beginning of the school year and by December when school was out for the holidays, I had read them all. You know, that's just the way it was. But I think you have a very good idea. We need to try to get some information in print where people can go and learn where Africans came from, where the people that are in this country came from, what they have contributed to the making of America. Anyone else?